We don't often enough talk about demigods, and I'm pretty sure that we should at some point, you know, but if they've lived on the earth, they are demigods. If they haven't lived on the earth, then no one has literally seen them, and they are energy, and they have a face that we can feel synonymous with, and a name that we can call them by, because this has been graced upon us by ancestors who live, human beings. And we all must remember that human beings are fallible, although the God and Goddess do live inside of us. They're giving us free will, or we're given free will. When I say they or they're talking about the God and Goddess, I am talking about the different portions of energy or the energy as a collective, the masculine and the feminine. It all exists to me, you know, but, but it all exists. And, um, you know, it has a face simply because our ancestors have taught us this or have taught us that. And they are to be respected, our ancestors, of course, because they've also passed to us ways of doing things, of handling things, of traditions that we should follow, regardless of who either corrupts those traditions or adds to them or makes them part of themselves but calls them a different thing, celebrates them on a different day or what not. We choose our own path to follow what we call our God, our Goddess. We choose our own path and that dictates that we also outline for ourselves a belief system that is synonymous with our spirit inside. And anyone that doesn't believe in that has got life a little screwed up, you know, because it all came from somewhere. I'm not going to cast a stone or a rotten egg at somebody's house or wrap a house on Halloween because they're a cranky old woman. I mean, you know, the goddess is inside of that woman and who knows what ailments she has, you know. I remember as a child trick-or-treating and that's why I brought up that little example just out of the clear blue. I know it was random. But, you know, we thought about wrapping our house and throwing eggs at our house and all of that, which we didn't. We were actually really good kids and being swayed by older kids. And uh, we said, no, we're not going to do that. And we walked off, you know. But even then, I realized that, that there's an entity that's higher than all of us. And that entity exists in each and every one of us. And for that reason, I left that little old lady's house and a couple of my friends with me and whoever did what later, I don't know. But I tried to dissuade them not to. You know, that old lady might be having health problems that will take her life a month from then. And she'll see God before we do. She'll become part of the God system before we will, or be reborn on this earth before I will. You know, she's had a harder time than I have because she was much older than I was, and I'm sure she had seen a lot more than what an 11-year-old girl had. You know, so, you know, treat everybody wisely. Treat them as though they're the God or Goddess incarnate. Be at one with them. Listen to them. Give them validity. Trust that what they are saying they believe is true, at least for them, and respect that, not down it. You know, don't try so hard to preach your own religion or belief to somebody that doesn't want to hear it. You know, don't spend so much time trolling other people on their religion when you could be studying your own taking in new knowledge and wisdom that you didn't have before and or taking from the people you're persecuting and making what they believe 
be part of you because they say one little thing that could just add up to being correct. I believe the God and Goddess is all of us. It's the world, it's the trees, it's the dog running down the road or barking in the fence across the street from another yard. It is the woman in the grocery store or the little old lady in the house that didn't give out candy when I was 11 years old. I believe the God and Goddess are the electricity flowing through the TV or through myself or through this thing that somebody else touched even though it may just be minor residual energy. Mm -hmm. I believe the God and Goddess is the residual energy that is making something appear to happen over and over again in a loop with an entity that had passed at one time who is not really there in spirit anymore. Or the, the God and Goddess is the spirit that is in the Ouija board that is actually communicating to you. And that it is light and dark. And that it is masculine and feminine. And then it is green and yellow and black and white and uh, red. And, and that you should just always love every aspect of life possible. Taking note that the God and Goddess, or the energy that be the God and Goddess, the powers that be, is what some people even call it. And I like that term, I really do. Anyway, this has been Lady Leanna, and I certainly hope that you've enjoyed this video. I have really enjoyed talking to you. It's a very, very deep, deep topic. And, um,. It's putting myself out there a lot because as I said, a lot of people could totally disagree with what I've said and I could lose a lot of subscribers. I feel that it would be pretty small of the people that I'm subscribed simply because I give my feelings on what the God system is because in all reality that is exactly what I was talking about in this video that you should be big enough to take in all that another would have to say and make part of it, make part of it into what would become you, even if you can't take all of what they say in. Now, by some fluke, there could be somebody you would cross paths with and they could say everything in the world that you could possibly never agree with. But those times and occasions are rare and by all means feel free, you know. But you should listen to every and all. Take in everything they have to say for the moment. As much time as you've got to give to them. And take what you will from it and leave what you won't. Brightest blessings everybody and thank you for joining us with Eclectic Spirituality with Lady Leanna. Bye-bye.